Arabic geometric patterns or al zakhafa as it is called in Arabic. In recent years, there has been increased interest in Arabic geometric patterns. And now there are several books and videos on the internet describing the method of constructing these patterns. The method outlined in these books and videos are not new. In fact, they are the same method described in two books published in 1976 during the World of Islam festival. The first book is called Islamic Pattern by Keith Critchlow. And the second is Geometric Concept in Islamic Art by Isam Al Said. When looking at some of the pages, it becomes clear that most, if not all, successive authors followed exactly the same approach of these two books. It looks like everyone resigned to the idea that the original method used in constructing these patterns has been lost forever. I will demonstrate in these videos that this assumption is incorrect. From now onward, I will refer to the method outlined by these authors and subsequent authors as the Western method mainly because it's been adapted by almost all Western authors. But in my opinion, I find that this Western method is incorrect. The problem does not lie in the geometry itself. The mistakes are in choosing the wrong construction lines to create the patterns. I find the Western method incorrect for three main reasons. The first reason is that in many cases, this method leads to deformed shapes and patterns. And here is a clear example. One side of this shape does not reflect the other side in this pattern. And I have to mention here that the symmetry is very important in geometric patterns, as the deformation in the shapes will restrict development of the pattern into new and more complicated patterns. And here is another deformed pattern. In the next video, I will point out the mistakes and the deformed shapes and show the correct version of this pattern. The second reason is that the Western method is too complicated. Even when you get the correct pattern, you have to draw so many unnecessary construction lines. Here is a typical example. This pattern is one of the simplest geometric patterns. You need to draw at least 24 lines and one circle using the Western method. That's before you even start drawing the pattern itself. Compare that with the proper and correct traditional method. You only need 10 lines and 4 arcs to construct the exact same pattern. This problem becomes even more exaggerated when drawing a simple five-folded pattern like this one. You end up with a confusing maze of lines and circles. But with the traditional method, you only need to draw eight lines and eight arcs for the construction base. That's a big difference. And you also have the advantage of specifying the width of the pattern in advance, something you cannot do in the Western method. The third reason for considering the Western method incorrect is because it fails to observe the importance of proportional relation between the shapes and the patterns, which I will explain in more details in this video. My journey with Zahrafa, which means geometric ornamentation in Arabic, started when I was 14 years old back in 1966. I learned how to draw these patterns in the traditional way used by craftsmen from my father, who learned it from his father. I believe that this traditional method was handed down from one generation to the next and goes back more than a thousand years. What you see here is a small part of my collection. Some of them are my father's drawings. Over the last 50 years, I've collected more than 2,000 of these patterns.
and the number is still growing. It is worth noting that these patterns were designed by mathematicians who wrote books and manuals to show craftsmen how to draw these patterns and some copies of these books survived and still exist today. The traditional method has many advantages over the Western method, but the most important advantage is preserving the proportional relationship between the different shapes that makes up the patterns. Before illustrating the process of drawing the geometric pattern using the traditional method, I think it is important to explain the principle of proportional relationship first. To do that, I will use this four-folded pattern for this illustration. This principle also applies to the five-fold and the six-fold patterns, and both have their own different relationships. First, we will select several shapes from this pattern and compare them to each other. Now we will compare each shape to the star. The star is considered as the central feature of these geometric patterns. And almost every shape in these patterns are measured or evaluated by the star. Let's put the dart shape inside the star in this position. At first, it doesn't look much. But if we add a second dart inside the star, it becomes clear that the total perimeter of the two darts is equal to the perimeter of one square that makes up the star. If we then add another two darts in this layout, we get one square in the middle and four right-angled triangles. In fact, the middle square itself is made of four of the same triangles. We will see these exact triangles and squares in different numbers when we compare other shapes with the star. This means that in most cases, the area difference between these shapes are set to an exact unit or multiple of that unit, and the triangle is that unit. If we look at the next shape, it becomes clear that the length of this shape is equal to the length of the star. Also, the area and the perimeter of that shape are equal to the area and the perimeter of one square. In fact, it is easy to calculate. Just look at the star with one square shaded. We're left with four unshaded triangles. And when we shade the shape itself, we're left with four triangles as well. Now if we compare the diamond shape with the star, the dart shape appears in the formation. And if we add a second dart to the other side of the diamond, we get a new formation of a new shape. This shape appears frequently in the four-folded patterns. In Arabic, this shape is called bakra, meaning bobbin. When we move the diamond up, we can see that the side of the diamond is equal to the side of the square that makes up the star. Therefore, the diamond perimeter is equal to the perimeter of one square. As we compare the rest of the shapes with the star, different forms and different relationships appear. But in all cases of these comparisons, we can see that the angle in all these shapes are 45 degrees or its multiple. Whatever shape appears in the four-folded patterns must have 45 degrees angle or its multiple. In the five-fold patterns, the crucial angle is 36 degrees or its multiple. And in the six-fold pattern, the angle is 30 degrees or its multiple. Of course, these relationships are extended when comparing the different shapes with each other. In fact, the proportional relationship is compound and multiple. It includes length, area, perimeter, and angles. If the pattern is constructed correctly, 
shapes from completely different patterns will have similar relationship between them. Let's select this shape from a different pattern. Note that this shape does not exist in the first pattern. And if we combine the diamond and two dots from the first pattern, we get the bobbin shape. And by moving the bobbin in this manner, we get the same shape from the second pattern. By observing these principles, we can unite and link all shapes in the patterns. In fact, this can be used as a tool to appraise and evaluate the pattern. These relationships allow and assist the development of simple geometric patterns into a new and more complicated patterns. Also, it will allow smooth transition between the shapes when we extend the pattern beyond its borders. And we will see that when we develop a pattern in the next video. As a result, the shapes in the pattern coexist in harmony with each other. This harmony gives the pattern a hidden and mysterious beauty. Constructing the geometric pattern without paying attention to the proportional relationship is like playing music without tuning your instrument. In the next video, I will show how to construct a four-folded pattern from Al Qairawan Mosque in Tunisia using the traditional method and compare it with the modern Western method which is used by many authors at the present time. Then I will put the patterns constructed by both Western and traditional method to the test and check them with the principle of proportional relationship. And thank you for watching this video.